Uh, I'm wearing a tie, in case you can't quite see this. Uh, it's made out of, oddly enough, uh, amazingly enough, creatively enough, out of a Springer Theater Penny t-shirt. <laughs> and it was designed uh, for me by the students of the company class of the production of Paul. From, uh, this is a great job, I love this tie. I love everything about what the students have given me, and there is not enough time to tell you what the students here have given me. You know, I've never wanted to stand here. I uh, never imagined standing here in this capacity for at least two reasons. One is um, I love what I do. And it turns out I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> I think most of you know um, through word of mouth, maybe the story that, uh, that Chuck Williams wrote in the paper or uh, some Facebook postings, um, that my transition uh, decision was made some time ago. In fact, last April, when I presented a letter to Paul and to the executive committee of the Springer Board indicating my intentions. We, of course, did not want to announce it during the summer for obvious reasons. It would have created a horrible distraction for the Summer Theater Academy, and we waited until September to do so. And, of course, we had barely announced that decision when a more serious situation came along that required yet another announcement that gave everything a greater sense of urgency. Now, there's nothing funny about cancer or anything, um, but if you can me for just a moment, <laughs> and it's only because of a little thing you saw here a while ago that was churning and chompy that I mentioned this. Um, you have to follow the logic here, because the stories are connected, but trust me, it's worth it. <laughs> when um, Andy Roddenberry, Dr. Andy Roddenberry at St. Francis told me that I had pancreatic cancer, um, I had this odd, uh, maybe uh, not odd, maybe completely understandable, sort of out-of-body reaction to it. He was, uh, Andy was very engaged in this conversation. He. Uh, he was showing me the, the CT scan on his computer monitor. He had charts and graphs, and he was talking about uh, procedural options and surgery and radiation and chemotherapy and all that. He was really into it. And uh, so I was sucked in. He was a good storyteller, and I was completely uh, entranced by this presentation until, of course, there's a sobering moment when Debbie and I remember, oh, he's talking about Well, it reminded me, and I, I kind of smiled at it, I don't think I told you at the time, it reminded me of another situation in Milwaukee when I had an encounter with a snow removal uh, piece of equipment. <laughs> Any of you ever stuck your hand in a snowball? <laughs> Whether you stick your hand in the blower or the blower comes to get you, it's going to be bad for your hand. <laughs> So when I'm in the ER with the doctor there, I don't remember his name, very charming fellow. It's Dr. Gobin. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Gobin was really into his presentation. He said, now there's things we can do here. Uh, there's this live skin graft. He's going through surgical options, and we can do this, and tape over the end, and we uh, fix the bone, and, and there's this great thing I just read about in the New England Medical Journal, and we can try it a lot. Because you just do what you normally do. <laughs> he was so into it, such a good storyteller. I was completely captivated by his presentation until I had that sobering moment again when he's talking about my hand. <laughs> and the reason I tell this story is partly because I love quoting movies from the 70s when good movies were made. <laughs> At that moment, you know, when you think about these two stories, the similarities end there. The difference is so a matter of fault. Cancer, uh, it's not my fault. I shouldn't have it, no indicators, no family history, nothing that I'm aware of that I did personally to contribute to the situation. However, I stuck my hand in a snowball. <laughs> to the situation and at that moment in the ER the words from a movie came crashing in on me as Strother Martin says in the movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, morons. <laughs> I've got morons on my teeth. 
<laughs> I have to thank the staff of the Springer Opera House. Many staffs have come and gone. This staff in particular is a phenomenal group of dedicated, hardworking, passionate people. I enjoy working with them every day. I will miss it. I would like to thank the teachers of the Springer Theater Academy. Many of them are here tonight. Some of the faces on the stage a while ago just <coughs> couldn't believe what I was seeing. I know they all appreciate the opportunities to be here. I appreciate them being here and becoming part of my life. Paul, I wouldn't be the person I am today without you. Your support, encouragement, friendship, and love have made me the person I am. Giving me this opportunity to be here to explore those concepts, to explore becoming what I'm doing. Not too many people think of the value of that kind of investment. There's not enough time to tell you, Paul, what I owe you. Suffice it to say, everything. And Debbie, Bridget Anderson, there is not a person that I admire more, respect more, trust more, or love more. You complete me. You make me whole. students of the Springer Theater Academy, parents, thank you for trusting us, trusting me with your children. When I think about that, it's almost overwhelming. I want to thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of yours. And so where are we going forward? We don't know. That's okay. It's okay not to know. If anybody tells you it's not, they're lying. Or they're selling you something. It's okay not to know. The Springer's future, um, the next season, the budget, the shows, the next generation of leadership here. These are things we don't know. My personal life, there are unknowns. But I am not afraid. And young people, I want you to feel the same. Do not be afraid. It's going to be okay. Because there is one thing I do know. This organization changes lives. This organization makes better people. This organization has an impact that is never ending. I would like to leave this very um, homemade sign. Matthew, you can improve on it if you like. <laughs> But I would like for this to hang in the green room so that every artist, every craftsman, every person who comes into the green room takes this admonition seriously. Do your job well and treat people nicely. <laughs> Woo! <laughs>